in my state, people are sort of sick and tired of the federal government. They don't, um, there's not a lot of trust left in the federal government. They think, they, they, it wasn't before, but with the pandemic, there was, they just see this unbelievable waste. I, I've talked to people that say, you know, the, um, we, got, we got money where we weren't supposed to get, and they told us, eh, just keep it. And this stuff's crazy. Um, I've been, from the day we looked at the CARES Act, I opposed the state and local bailouts because I didn't believe the revenues were gonna go down that much. And I'd been a governor and I knew where my tax base was gonna be and it wasn't going away. But it happened. I think the state and local bailouts totaled about $500 billion, $500 billion. I think the total, I to, I think the total revenue for uh, under the state budgets, the uh, collection by the states is about a trillion dollars. So that's a lot of darn money. Um, so, but here's, here's some of the headlines. <clears throat> Biden administration to, to fund crack pipe distribution to advance racial equity out of state and local bailout money. That's one. Vaccine bonuses aid to businesses in a golf course. I thought the money was supposed to go over COVID and to save people's lives. Citizen states put $350 billion stimulus windfall to widely varied use. Flush with COVID-19 aid, schools stir funding to sports. That's interesting. Connecticut City used COVID relief funds to hire a marching band. Probably you all like marching bands, um, but that doesn't seem smart. I've got a list, I've got a, li a mile long of different things, examples. Luxury hotels, golf courses, boathouse construction, aquarium maintenance, basketball hall of fame, art festivals, municipal anniversary celebrations, weed eaters, weed eaters auto repairs, horse feed, sea urchin, hatcheries, walkways at zoos, fire hydrants and trash cans and swag bags. State and local bailout for to save people's lives. Now here, I try to think about how my, how my voters think about this. So I think we've all gone to, if we've been in a rush, we went to a fast food place and we ordered a meal through the, the darn line. We rushed out, we got our food and we got on the highway and we found out those darn French fries weren't there. Sort of way I think a lot of people think of the federal government now. This, they say, well, I'm, I'm willing to pay my taxes, but I'm not getting what I paid for. And then I also thought about that about, we've all bought houses, right? And remember how we always hire those darn inspectors that cost us money, and we think we're gonna know what we got? And then afterwards we find that the pool doesn't work, and it was, oh, they didn't check that. Or gosh, there's a leak in the roof. So you guys bust your butts, okay? I mean, you do. I mean, I, I, I like all your reports and everything. So tell, put yourself in my position. We got, I got my, the people in my state saying, why do we spend the money like this? You guys are trying to do your job. Why doesn't this work? What would, so how, I mean, I mean, first off, you guys, you guys, have you guys had the experience with the fast food place? Probably have, right? And houses, we all have. I just talked to a friend of mine that said she had no idea they didn't even check her pool, but um, she just bought a house. But um, how, what would your response be to people in Florida? Any of you? Because there's a heck of, this is, I mean, the, this fraud is just rampant. Yeah, look, I think um, this is something we've seen over and over again. It's, and the particularly the problem here was, as the legislation was put forward and the, and the agencies implemented it, um, the, the legislation didn't require, for example, certain checks and controls. The legislation could have been tightened up to do that. And then the agency's um, view was, going back to the chair's question, all about speed. It was, we just need to get the money out. The country is shut down. This is particularly in March and April 2020. We just need to get the money out. You IGs, you law enforcement folks, go figure it out later where the fraudsters are. We're just going to get the money out. And that resulted in tens, hundreds of billions of dollars in fraud. And so two overlaying concepts, I will say, is um, I think Congress, as it legislates, needs to think about with a program like the Coronavirus Relief Fund, CRF, the first $150 billion, which was in the CARES Act for state and local entities, and then the uh, state and local fiscal recovery fund, which was the $350 billion in the ARP bill. Both of those had very little parameters as to what they could be used for. And so they were lawfully used for certain things that people would ask the questions. Those don't seem tied to the pandemic. And so Congress can legislate better. 
and agencies certainly can do a much better job. We've written, all of us here, hundreds of recommendations, probably thousands at this point of recommendations on how the executive branch and agencies can do a better job in implementing these programs. And the problem, I've talked about this over and over again, the problem with sending this money out is the hundreds of billions of dollars that didn't go to the small businesses, that didn't go to the unemployed from the UI programs, that didn't go to various folks that state locals perhaps we think should have funded. They didn't get the money. This wasn't an unlimited sum of money. It was a large sum of money, but it wasn't unlimited. So every dollar that went somewhere else didn't go to the people who really needed it or the businesses that did really you guys, needed it. Did you guys it. even have the power to, to look at the state and local bailout money? Yeah, we did. You did? And we have. And so we've worked with the Treasury Inspector General. They've relied, actually, we, we um, created, for example, with our analytics platform, a risk scoring model, taking 27 variables and helping them have that information so they could assess the risk in both the CRF and the SLFRF program, um, the two state and local programs. Um, and they've identified um, in the latest numbers um, 2.24 billion in question costs from their work and relying in part on our data. Is she? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so we know that requirements for strategic fraud risk management have been in place since 2016 for the agencies. And we also know that the lag in implementing those requirements in, in you know, normal operations led to some of the large gaps in what we saw in the pandemic. And we wanted to get behind that, right? What is going on? Why are the, these you know, lags continuing? So in a recent survey that we did of the 24 CFO Act agencies, we asked them about the challenges and what might incentivize you to take these actions that we want. So you know, behavioral economics, we think, is the way to go. Try to figure out what's going on, what can, what's preventing them, what are the barriers, and what can nudge them in the, in the direction that we want. Now, the challenges are not going to be super surprising. You know, it's access to data and uh, resources and analytic capabilities and, and tools and techniques, which we think that a centralized, you know, government entity like Treasury's Office of Payment Integrity can address some of those issues. On the incentive side, there are a number of things that the CFO, agents, CFO Act agencies mentioned, like congressionally directed funding for payment integrity, um, ability to demonstrate return on investment from fraud risk management activities, um, yeah, a couple of other things. And one of the things that we're going to be doing in the new year in GAO is delving into some of these incentives and these barriers to taking a strategic approach to fraud risk management. 